Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and a diabetes education specialist. Today, I am going to talk to you about the best weight loss medications. Now, a lot of you have struggled going through diets, this diet, that diet, keto diet, Mediterranean diet, but then eventually, most diets fail. Why? Because, you know, we are not... Uh, created to follow a diet we are follow we are created to follow a normal uh, natural eating pattern and unfortunately we do not eat natural anymore and then we kind of you know in a, in a western society we just eat for social in social gatherings we just eat out of boredom food is available everywhere it just is hard to lose weight. And some of you will be like, amen to that. Uh, some of you will be like, oh no, yeah, I have a great willpower. I can lose weight anytime. Well, then that video is not for you. So you can close and move into my other videos that talks about the diet. But if you are the one who are looking for a weight loss medication, I will tell my honest opinion right now. Coming up. All right, guys, so basically, uh, I'm going to tell you about what I would love for myself for weight loss. If I want to lose weight, what would I use? What would Dr. Ergen use for himself or for his family for weight loss? And I have, and I have used it for myself and for my family as well. And this is totally off-label, although there is an on-label, there's a label drug for that as well. But it, you, some of you will know this. Victoza, for example, Ozempic, Trulicity, uh, Byrian, Bayera. Uh, a lot of patients who use these diabetic drugs, these diabetic medications, have lost weight. Some of them lost so much weight in my clinic, they'll come and say, Doc, can we stop this medication because I don't want to lose weight anymore? And you don't really hear that uh, statement from a lot of other weight loss drugs, to be honest with you. And I get these inquiries that are like, oh, well, my diabetes is totally in remission. My A1C is 5.3. I have lost 60 pounds and I look too skinny. Can I change this medication? And I'm like, uh, that's a weird uh, question because <laughs> normally people always ask for more weight loss medications. But to be honest with you, these medications are great. So my favorite and actually the best uh, results that I get with the weight loss drugs uh, in that class, we call them GLP-1 class for diabetics. Uh, and also for non-diabetics, by the way, you know, it works. The weight loss feature works for diabetics and non-diabetics. The problem with the non-diabetics is... Um, that the insurances typically do not cover the drugs as easy uh, for weight loss than for diabetes. If they have diabetes, coverage is a lot easier. If you don't have diabetes, uh, then it's a little bit harder, but there are ways around it, and I'll tell you in a minute. So, uh, I talked about the, didn't I, I didn't say about the rebelsis, right? So, rebelsis is also another one that just came as a pill. So, most of these agents were like injections, and the, the newest addition to the class is rebelsis which is same thing as Ozempic in the injection form, but uh, it's in the pill form, which makes it a little bit easier to deal with for some people. Um, but the bottom line is Ozempic, for example, is once a week injection, Trulicity the same way, uh, Victoza is a once a day injection, and these are basically gastrointestinal hormones that slows down your stomach. So your stomach slows down, your appetite go, go in your brain directly goes down, and suddenly you feel full way faster than you would otherwise be uh, feel you know feel full um, so that's one of the main feature but also you don't really crave for foods anymore you don't really crave for all the things that you have been craving all day long and fasting is not a huge problem anymore on these drugs now you're going to be like oh, well these are diabetic drugs diabetics has to eat otherwise their blood sugar goes down well that's not true for this class of drugs basically when you're on a glp1 unless you're on a sulfonylurea or insulin glp1 by itself does not really drop your blood sugars it can normalize your blood sugar it can bring your blood sugar down to 80 and between 80 and 120 all the time and the good thing is you can still eat the things that you like to eat but you're not going to crave too much for them let's say you know instead of just quitting on the bread and rice and pasta totally 
uh, now you're going to be able to be satisfied with a very little rice or very little pasta, uh, you know, a very little bread will still satisfy you and you're not going to feel like you're totally deprived of all the goodness in your life. So that's why I use those medications very heavily. Uh, and the, believe it or not, you know, there's a lot of this negative, uh, you know, things in the, in, the, in the media sometimes or actually in the commercials people see. But these are legalities. Like they talk about like this pancreatic cancer, medullary thyroid cancer. I have been doing this for 10 years. I have not seen a single patient who had pancreatic cancer from these drugs. And I don't know, I probably prescribed tens of thousands of it. So it has been seen in rats, not in human beings. If you have a family history of pancreatic cancer or medullary thyroid cancer, like they say on the commercials, you know, we take this extra precaution. I'm like, no, some people beg for it. They'll come and say, hey, you know, I have this cancer, pancreatic cancer in my family, but I, I, I like, I read about this drug and I want to be on it. I want to lose weight. I'm like, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because it's a legality issue. I don't think it's going to cause pancreatic cancer on you, but it's in the label. You have a family history. I'm not going to give it to you. You know, uh, I have a license to protect, you know. So, but other than that, uh, in, in my opinion, I give it to my family and my friends friends comfortably, to, of course, my patients, and I think they are the most revolutionary class because it avoids you going to insulin. If you're on insulin, it helps you to come off the insulin. If you're not on insulin or any other agent, it helps you to lose weight and still be able to be on a reasonable diet uh, that is low carb, but not necessarily no carb, uh, and still have a peaceful you know, normal life. Now, if you look at these YouTube videos, you will see these YouTube doctors or chiropractors or some other people who have no medical background. Uh, they'll just tell you just eat no carbs. And they have hundreds of videos saying the same thing, eat no carbs. So I'm like, why would uh, people watch them to just listen to them saying eat no carbs? Um, because it doesn't make any sense. People eat carbs, okay? You know, there are different ways of doing things. So I think these drugs help diabetic patients drastically. Now, if you don't have diabetes, it will still help you lose weight. Now, how do you get your hands on uh, on these drugs? Now, if you have a wonderful insurance that doesn't question if you're diabetic or non-diabetic, your doctor prescribes it, you get it. There are, there are a lot of insurances like that. So if, you're, if you have one of those, great, because doctors can prescribe off-label medication. So um, when I say off-label, let's say, you know, we have a lot of things we use. Like, for example, I'm going to use... Um, uh, you know, a medication that is used for blood pressure, but I may use it for uh, something else, for kidney production. You know, I may use um, a medication that is used for prostate. I may use it for hair loss. Uh, so stuff like that that we do because we know it works or we know it will work as a doctor, but it's not been studied. It's not been sent to FDA for approval. So when FDA did not approve it yet or, or when there are not enough studies to make it FDA eligible, then we call this off-label. Off-label does not mean that it's harmful for you. That's all. So as long as your physician is looking for your best interest and thinks that that medication may be helpful for you and your insurance is reasonable to give that medication to you, they can get it. Um, now, sometimes, you know, if your insurance is asking prior authorization and if you have done, don't have diabetes, don't even, don't even try that. They're going to outright reject it. Um, now, when it comes to how other ways you can get your hands on, uh, there is a medication called Drobalsis. It came to the market recently, similar to Ozempic. It's a pill and it works as like a voucher. So, so far I have prescribed Drobalsis to so many people and if they have a commercial plan, not the Medicare or Medicaid, if they have a commercial plan, it goes through all the time as long as they use the voucher uh, they have to go to the website. They have to text a number. Uh, you just go to the, go to their website, rebelsis.com. Um, and, you know, in there, you can, it says, you know, how to get help or whatever. So text that number, you text help, and they text you some things, and, and, and they finally send you a voucher, and then boom, and you take it to the pharmacist. The pharmacist runs it as a secondary insurance or as a voucher, um, and then suddenly you get your medication for $10 a month. And it helps with the weight loss. Now, of course, you your physician has to be familiar with the medication. You have to make sure that you are adjusting your dose slowly and according to your response. The the adjustment is typically once a month. Uh, but in my opinion, as I said, the Ozempic, Trulicity, Rubelsis, uh, Victoza, 
are best medications for weight loss. Now, Saxenda is uh, another medication. So Saxenda is a drug that is primarily F approved by the FDA for weight loss. Now, what is Saxenda? It is a drug that is same thing as Victoza. It's just a higher dose. And I believe Trulicity is doing studies right now to try to have Trulicity become a weight loss drug, you know, FDA approved or on label instead of off label. Um, but these are the things that uh, that that will help you. Uh, or, or the Saxenda, Saxenda definitely uh, can be approved if you have an employer coverage. For for example, some employers will say, you know what, I care about my uh, employees health and wellness and I'm gonna you know cover this drug even if your insurance doesn't cover it uh, or your employ employer insurance may have that specific benefit because like you may have a United Healthcare or Blue Cross uh, but but your employer plan may have a different benefit than a regular Blue Cross or regular United Healthcare so you can run it by your employer if it is an employer benefit uh, then definitely you can get your hands on Saxenda and that is another name for Victoza that is used for basically for weight loss. Again, it has to be under physician supervision, physician prescription is required. Now, what else out there? So we also have this uh, Fentramine, right? So it's a generic, it's, it's Adipex, you know, there are a lot of doctors who will just run a weight loss clinic and all day long they're going to prescribe Fentramine. Now, Fentermine or Adipax. Now, what's the problem with the Fentermine or Adipax? They're controlled substances. Uh, you know, you have to be monitored. It can affect your heart rate. It can give you a lot of side effects. Uh, but also, it has to be stopped after, you know, after three months or so because it is what the law says. In most states, you cannot just keep writing a prescription for life, you know, that is controlled because it is uh, not necessarily tried in studies to prove that it's safe still to continue with that medication. Um, on the other hand, there's a medication called Cusemia, and that medication basically has been studied and has Fentermine in it, as well as Topamax. Now, they have this Fentermine and Topamax in a long-acting form, and it is um, a little bit more effective than Fentermine alone, uh, and it can be used in the long term. Yes, it is still controlled, but it can definitely be used in the long term, and yet it's definitely more expensive. Very limited insurances cover that. Typically, the price range is around hundred to hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, you can shop around, but you will need a prescription, and more than likely, you will need to report to doctor's office because it's a controlled substances. In most places, you will need to be monitored for your heart rate and so forth. So, other than that, there are some other drugs out there, um, but really, you know, your Cusemia, your Fentermine, your other uh, oral uh, pill options. The other medications are not that effective. Recently, there was something called Belvique, which was um, recalled from the market. Um, so that's out. You don't really have a lot of options at this moment, other than Fentermine and Cusemia. Uh, Velbutrin sometimes, uh, or Bupropion, uh, also has been used for weight loss, but the efficacy is not uh, that great. Uh, but, you know, it's an, it's an antidepressant drug. Uh, you know, a lot of antidepressant drugs will cause weight gain, but Velbutrin or Bupropion will uh, cause a little bit of a weight loss, so that is a plus. Uh, but the bottom line, again, my favorite is the GLP-1 class. Yes, they can give you a little nausea, maybe a little gastrointestinal problems in the beginning, but they fade away, and in my opinion, uh, they will change your cholesterol, they will re improve your insulin resistance, they will give you a bunch of weight loss, and that is the best weight loss strategy with the minimal side effects, in my opinion. Again, this is a totally non-sponsored video. It's my honest opinion, what I think, what I do in my practice. And I hope that video was useful to you guys. Please give a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next video.